ABC's Dancing with the Stars under fire tonight in the wake of the announcement that former Trump White House press secretary Sean Spicer will be a contestant on the upcoming season. I want to discuss now with New York Times uh, James Panawazic, uh, who is a new has a new article and it's titled "Don't Let Sean Spicer Tap Dance Out of Infamy on Dancing with the Stars." So good to have you on. Thank you very much. Thanks, son. Here's what you write in your article, and I quote. It says, this is one time when we should get uptight. Dancing with the Stars is just a silly, innocuous reality show. That's true, and that's exactly why it shouldn't be helping Sean Spicer dry clean his reputation. I mean, you go on to call um, his casting a disgrace. Tell me why you're so, so opposed to him being on the show. You know, this was somebody who, you know, he's not a C-list actor from a sitcom or something like that. He's, he's somebody who had a public trust and who had one job, which was to inform the press. And Very serious it, job. Yeah, and to thereby inform the American people. And uh, you know, did it you know, mendaciously, like, did not carry out that job, uh, spread misinformation. That's you know not good for the press. It's not good for for democracy, and, and that is actually a serious thing. You know, generally I don't care who Dancing with the Stars casts. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's a it's a light, ridiculous show. But but when you take somebody, particularly since why is Sean Spicer there at all? What is he known for? He's known for the controversies around him basically misinforming the country. So they're rewarding that. Yeah, he responded uh, to your article by telling media that the idea that I need to uh, make myself feel better is preposterous. I'm in this because I enjoy it. I'm very comfortable with who I am, what I believe, and who I support, and that's it. What do you think of that? Um, you know, I don't think that this is therapy for him, but you know, uh, Public personalities do this sort of thing all the time as rehabilitation. You show yourself as somebody who, you know, is, is uh, you know, got a good sense of humor, can laugh at himself, can put him out, you know, himself out there, and can't we just, you know, move on past all this and let bygones be bygones? And, uh, you know, I just, I don't think there's really that, that level of, of contrition there that justifies that. You basically call him a professional liar in your article. That's basically what you're saying. As White House press secretary, as we said, he did spread misinformation. Yeah. I mean, as we know, on the first day when he talked about the crowd sizes, let's listen. This was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period, both in person and around the globe about the inauguration he said that even though there was no photographic there was photographic proof that what he was saying was not true yeah and and because it's so brazen that's what makes it so dangerous basically his first act is to say the evidence of your eyes doesn't matter and just believe what's important for your team and you know just just disregard the objective facts and listen to what you need to be true and and coming from that position that's that's a serious thing it's much more serious than you know anything that generally goes on on an ABC dancing reality show. One of the hosts of Dancing with the Stars, Tom Bergeron, actually joked about Spice's inauguration lie. Today, here it is. The nice thing is, Sean will be in charge of assessing audience size uh, throughout the end. <laughs> But Bergeron seems to, I mean, seems to actually be pretty unhappy about Sean Spicer's booking, about them casting him on the show. He tweeted out a statement today where he says that he had lunch with the show's uh, executive producer three months ago about where he thought they uh, would both agree on, on the show quote. And he said, um, would be a joyful respite from our exhausting political climate and free of inevitability, um, this divisive, inevitably divisive bookings from any party uh, affiliations. And he goes on to say that clearly a different decision was made after they talked about that, right? He didn't want yeah. these political bookings. Um, and he have to agree to disagree. Why do you think he felt the need to go on the record saying that he wasn't happy about this? I'm sure he wasn't comfortable with this. You know, I mean, it's, it's a, you know, a divisive decision, partly because, again, you know, you, you are, you're casting somebody who, because he's famous and because he's famous for misleading people from a position of power. And I think a lot of people would be uncomfortable at that. Of course, when you do something like that, you know, when you cast somebody like that at the producer level who's controversial, that means attention, you know, like this, and, and it means ratings, uh, you know, which makes me feel sort of ambivalent about, you know, calling it out. But on the other hand, you kind of have to call that out or else we just don't have any standards. James Panawazic, thank you so much. Oh, I thank appreciate you, your time.